What's going on guys, this is Rob and we are back with Night Terrors and this is Shazam the God of Nightmares and he's watching on as everybody in the Shazam family burns to death. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's funny, that's not funny at all. So the thing about this is this basically is just the result of what's going on with the Night Terrors event which is to say basically all the superheroes and even the supervillains are just kind of stuck in this sort of nightmare comatose state where they're forced to endure these nightmare experiences over and over and over again. For Mary Marvel, Billy Batson basically becoming evil, like Black Adam, is like her worst nightmare. And in fact, when she woke up in this nightmare realm, the other members of the Shazam family, specifically Darla and a few others, were trying to get water because there was a fire, but there was no water anywhere. And that's when Billy Batson showed up and simply said, no, I'm just gonna let him die. And in fact, he tries to stop her when she goes to their aid. Now, the funny thing about this is that when she goes to attack, he shouts Shazam and turns back into Billy Batson, and that basically stops her. Because the reality here is that Mary is not aware of the fact that she's in a nightmare. Now, for those of you guys who would look at this circumstance and see like a house on a barren wasteland and all that kind of stuff, and you would think that would alert her to the fact that she is in basically a dream state or really just some place that's not the real world. One of the things to keep in mind with the Shazam family is they're routinely going on these wild and zany adventures, right? Like Shazam and the Seven Magic Lands. They end up in these places where you like come aboard and you bring along all your hopes and dreams and together you'll find everything that you're looking for, right? The compass is left behind and it'll only slow you guys down. So they end up in this situation where their heart will be their guide and they raise the sails and then take the helm, right? That's really what you run into in the Shazam stories. And so because of this, I really hope people got the reference, because of this, it's not something she's immediately aware of, right? And so even then, when Shazam basically takes away her ability to use her own powers, she does exactly what you would expect with somebody like Mary Marvel and just goes running into the house to try to rescue them anyway. Now that's one of the more important things in all seriousness when it comes to the Shazam family. The reason why the power was even bestowed upon them in the first place was because of the strength of character that they had. That sure, not necessarily having any abilities, still they would go forward and engage in what you and I would consider to be tasks of bravery. And so that's why they were even granted that ability in the first place. Now what's so interesting here is that despite her being in a dream state, she says the word Shazam and then suddenly her powers emerge. And that's when she's met with the rest of the Shazam family coming to this realization she's been sleeping this whole time. But then in turn, we find out that's not even real because her father manifests as what's basically like a giant bug and tells her to go back to sleep. So in the real world, she's totally out of it, right? Like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? She's like saying Shazam, getting her powers, saying Shazam, going back to normal, over and over and over again. Because she simply just says the words in a dream state, and it doesn't matter what mental state you're in, as long as you say the word, the transformation will happen. And so once she really kind of comes to on Friday, she still hasn't quite figured out that she's in a dream. And so as she's talking to her parents, they start saying like, you were calling the thunder last night and so on and so forth. A lot of what seems to mirror what's going on in the real world. And to her mind, it all seems legitimate until she gets into like this impossibly long taxi and is taken to a quote unquote dream specialist. Now along the way, the driver reveals himself to actually be Insomnia. Again, this main villain for the Night Terror story that's really just kind of jumping in and out of people's own nightmares, looking for this ridiculously powerful artifact called the Nightmare Stone that would allow him to keep the world in a sleeping state and then conquer all of existence. And so even then, where she's kind of taunted that she can't protect her family, she can't keep her family safe, the idea behind this is to sort of keep them trapped in this realm. And that's why so much psychological warfare is used. Because if you can keep somebody mentally and emotionally tied down to where they are, then their focus and their efforts would be kept in the here and now. Despite talk of saying like, I can save my family, I can keep them safe, the whole conversation keeps her believing she can affect the world she's in. And so long as she believes it's real, she'll stay trapped in it. That was the benefit of Damian Wayne. Damian Wayne realized incredibly fast that he was in a dream world and then learned to control his own dreams and then engineered his own escape. Mary Marvel is no Damian Wayne. She's cool, 
but she's no Damian Wayne. <laughs> and so that's when she starts to put two and two together because she ends up in this kind of sleep specialist hospital, which of course is twisted and screwed up and all that kind of stuff. It's a very dark and sinister looking place. And when she goes to say the word Shazam, she's immediately snatched up by Billy Batson. And every time she tries to say the word, she basically starts kind of coughing up and spewing out stuff that keeps her from being able to complete it. And so Billy Batson arrives on the scene and says, that's my word, not yours. You want to say it to save everyone, but I'm the only one who really knows how to use it. And he says, let me show you. And what he does is he brings each member of her family in front of her, shouts the word, they're electrocuted and they die. He literally kills her family in front of her. And it is, it's dark, man. It's brutal. Like every single person ends up getting killed. And so ultimately after everybody's dead, he walks up to her to say the word Shazam. Now that's where things start to get cool and that's kind of the nature of her magic because one of the things to remember when it comes to the members of the Shazam family, they're not like Superman, right? Where like they're exposed to a yellow sun and they get powers and they're super strong and fast. No, no, no. Their abilities come from gods outside and within the realm of the DC universe, right? The wisdom of Minerva, different things like that. Gods would not be affected by the power of insomnia. At least we're largely led to believe they wouldn't because gods don't really sleep, at least not as far as we're aware. And so because of that, the wisdom of Minerva comes into play, not in so much that like Minerva shows up and touches her forehead and says, let me show you the truth, but really more in the sense that she starts to realize she really is in a dream state. Nothing she's seeing is real. And that's why I say it's really cool the way this is done, because for someone like Mary Marvel and the crazy escapades they've had, things like this happen all the time. So how do you differentiate between a circumstance you encounter every single week and suddenly being in a dream state? The idea of Billy being evil, that's the kicker to her. That's the thing that sets her off because he refers to himself as the captain as Billy. And that's when she says, no, Billy Batson would never turn into a villain. He would die before he did, except for the Injustice universe when he became a bad guy. But outside of that, right? I mean, he, he was a bad guy. Sure, Superman killed him, whatever. He was a bad guy. Like, you cannot argue that he wasn't. So the cool thing here is that ultimately the fight breaks out between the two of them. We basically end up learning that Billy Batson is effectively insomnia masquerading as Billy, which most all of you probably figured out by now. The real kick about this is now Mary has to figure a way out. And that's the thing here. It's one thing to understand and to realize she's in a dream state. It's another to do something about it. And so once this takes place, she literally leaves her physical form and starts jumping into the bodies of the other members of her family in order to one part wake them up to the reality of what's going on, but also help them overcome their own dreams. Darla has the most adorable dream, if we're being honest with ourselves, right? Like, it's just like these giants, but because Darla is a diminutive girl, right, she's the youngest, like, adults are the things that terrify her the most, and they're kind of like these omnipresent, overwhelming things. It's like the cutest thing ever, right? So, like, Mary teams up with Darla, and, like, they beat up the adults, something that we all wanted to do when we were little kids. <laughs> <laughs> All we wanted to do was just be left alone and eat candy for dinner. What's so wrong with that? But the thing about this is that, of course, once they overcome these adults, then Mary realizes this is a possibility. And so then she jumps into the dream of Eugene and then in turn helps Eugene. Now, the funny thing about this is that insomnia does reappear. And he even goes so far as to say, it doesn't matter whose dream you're in. I have access to everybody's dream. But whether you consider it to be hokey or one of the hallmarks of the Shazam storyline, the power of family <laughs> basically prevails here, right? Like she overcomes this guy and then in turn shouts Shazam. That gives Eugene his powers and the kids that were bullying him and that were picking on him, Eugene helps them to understand their place in the bigger picture. And then following that, she ends up going to basically see uh, Pedro. Pedro is giving like this great big huge speech on a tour bus. Everybody's laughing at him because he has no pants. So she shouts Shazam. He gets his suit. He gets his pants. And then he probably helps the tourists understand their place in the bigger picture, maybe even help them finish with all their living. But the thing here is that jumping from one person to the next, basically granting them their powers and then waking them up to what's going on, they're all coming to the realization that they are in a dream state. Now that's one of the things about the Shazam family and it's really what kind of makes them unique in a lot of different ways. But even with Mary Marvel herself, right, where she goes and like rescues her dad and then brings the essence of her father into her mother's mind and they become pirates, 
which is amazing. <laughs> I love pirates. I absolutely love the idea of pirates. It's just like the most amazing concept ever. Of course, Insomnia steps in again. And in fact, the fight between the two of them transitions through dream states, right? Like jumping through other people's dreams, fighting through other people's dreams. You don't really get to see a whole lot of what's going on, but the real fear, right? The real meat and potatoes of what drives the fear of Mary Marvel is that she'll ultimately be forgotten. That Billy Batson as a superhero will become so popular and so famous that nobody will remember Mary Marvel. Now, this is kind of a funny thing because it's actually a reference to DC Comics in the 70s and 80s. For those of you guys who don't know what I'm talking about here, when Billy Batson first showed up on the scene in DC Comics, he was actually a product of a company called Fawcett Publications. He was more popular than Superman. So DC sued Fawcett basically over copyright grounds. The lawsuit stayed in court for like 10 years. Eventually DC got the rights to Shazam as a character and then shelved him until the 1970s. So there was nobody out there that could challenge the popularity of Superman. But once he came back, him and the Shazam family were in their own universe called Earth S. But with characters like Mary Marvel going into like the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, she largely became a forgotten character. Her and the rest of the Shazam family, they were there, but nobody was ever really there for them. They were there for Shazam. So it's a great metatextual commentary on the history of her relationship with like DC as a publishing company and even like us as the comic book readers. It's pretty cool, right? It's pretty awesome. But of course, the rest of the Shazam family basically show up invading her dream and then they in turn attack Insomnia. And what it does is it allows all of them to effectively wake up to the reality of what's going on. Mary Marvel is the one who wakes up in this story, but the real kind of indication is like everybody will start coming up as well. But the funny thing here is that even when she awakes and she looks out the window, she sees what looks like an evil Shazam, right? Now, of course, it is insomnia momentarily here in the real world, but DC could build off of this and they could in turn springboard this into a story that focuses on an evil version of Shazam that's not Black Adam. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that would be pretty dope. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. If you need to get caught up on Night Terrors, make sure you click this link to the Night Terrors playlist, and I will catch you all later. Peace.